Hey YouTube, we are going to replace the valve covers on this 2004 350Z today. Same thing applies to the 2003. First thing you have to do is go ahead and remove the strut tower brace. You got four bolts on each side and that's not too hard. Just be careful not to drop your bolt in there like I'm about to do right here, but don't do that because you have to fish it out with a magnet. Once you uh, get the bolts loose, you're going to notice that there is a few zip ties on both sides that uh, attach some electrical wiring. There, it's actually attached to the strut bar. You'll have to remove those. And you're gonna be able to do that with a pair of needle nose pliers takes a little bit of work as you can see right there I try to remove it and realized uh oh there's some clips so go ahead and get your needle nose out and you can pinch them together and slip them both out pretty easily this takes a little bit of wiggling you also though have to clip one zip tie on the right strut tower so Take your time and you can wiggle it loose. But like I was saying, you have to cut one on the passenger side. So you can replace that once the job's done. You can pick a few up at uh, your local Walmart or AutoZone, either one. Once you remove the strut tower brace, you're gonna have to go ahead and remove the intake manifold and the engine cover. But before you get too deep into that, you're probably gonna wanna disconnect the battery and I'll be doing that in a minute. Main reason we're disconnecting the battery is because you'll be um, disconnecting the electrical harness for the engine and you'll be disconnecting a bunch of sensors and you really don't want uh, the computer to see that. And if you leave the battery connected, it could cause some check engine lights when you go to reassemble. So at this point, it's best to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable and tuck it away. That should uh, avoid any problems. Okay, we'll be disconnecting the intake next. This is a K&N aftermarket intake. You may have the original equipment. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure <clears throat> you keep track of your bolts. Uh, you also have to make sure that you're gonna disconnect the map sensor and that's up close to the filter head. You can unclip it and uh, tuck the wiring away, get it out of your way. <clears throat> so, that shouldn't be too difficult either. After you get uh, all the screws loose to the intake, you can go ahead and take your engine cover off, which is just four, four bolts. Very easy. Just place that to the side. And then we'll go ahead and take the intake tubing apart. There's um, a piece of tubing that comes from the valve cover that runs to the intake tube and you'll have to disconnect I'm looking at it right now and you just pop that loose, set it aside. At this point, we're going to be loosening up the upper plenum screws there's two set there's an upper and lower part of your plenum you can't access the lower to take the upper off so i'm going to reverse sequence there's 18 bolts that hold the top on so now i'm going to remove the bolts in reverse order starting at 18 and working my way back to one you don't necessarily have to do that you can start at one and go the usual route to one through 18. it's up to you also, um, inch pounds, uh, when you reassemble, 
is 114. That's what I found uh, in the, my manual. But um, you can double check online, see if you can find any other values. Um, you can also take a picture of this with your cell phone. Keep that handy so when you go to retighten, you can have a quick reference for the tightening sequence. I, went, I made three rounds and I went, uh, I believe, a 30, 70, and then 114, something like that. And uh, now you're done. You can lift the plenum off. It's definitely difficult to get the uh, two coolant hoses off of the throttle body. It took a, a quite a bit of finagling to get that off. And then that was pretty easy to disconnect the uh, throttle body linkage, electrical linkage. That was not a problem. But I had to use some 303 <clears throat> rubber spray to actually soften up that rubber and break it loose. There's a few more bolts right there and right here and a couple on the other side that these basically just attach the harness, the electrical harness, electrical engine harness to the plenum just to keep it secure. You'll have to disconnect those. Then you're set to go ahead and take the screws out of the uh, lower part of the plenum. And there's a gasket there that I would highly recommend you replace. And you'll be able to see the gasket in a minute, but <clears throat> there's six screws holding in the lower plenum. So you back those out. Boom, and you can see the quite a bit of oil build up right there. And that's at uh, 120,000 miles, so you can see that that definitely needs to be cleaned out. And there's a problem with oil consumption. You can see that's where it's coming from. I want to solve that towards the end of the video. I'll show you uh, a simple way to avoid all that oil getting into your intake. You can see some more oil down there even getting into the uh, intake manifold itself. I went ahead and wiped all that up and cleaned it up and now I'm going to put a piece of cardboard over to keep any bolts or nuts get from getting lodged in there or any debris. That's the last thing you want in your intake is any type of debris or any type of uh, hardware falling in there. So cover it up, secure it, make sure it's not going to have any problems. Next we're going to be basically disconnecting the um, electrical harness from the knock sensor, which is back up, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, underneath that hose right there that's connected to the uh, valve cover. Underneath that hose is the electrical harness attachment and the knock, and it's attached to the knock sensor. So you, you're gonna have to pull that loose. And I ended up using some needle nose pliers. And right here, I'm just showing you the electrical harness. It's in the sh shape of a U. So once you unplug it and you pull it straight, it's not too bad, it gets out of your way. Here's the kind of needle nose pliers I use, the curved ones to depress the uh, electrical harness tab down, whoops, sorry about the focus, right there, just squeezed that down and popped it loose. It did take a little while to, f to get my needle nose in there and to get a good, uh, and to get it loose. But you can see the electrical harness right there. There's still quite a few more clips that I have to undo to get it completely out of the way. At this point, we're, we've already taken the coil packs out of the passenger side, and I'll be taking them off of the driver's side at this point. I labeled mine just so I didn't get them mixed up, but you don't have to. Pretty simple, I've already disconnected 
the electrical harness from the coil pack, so I didn't show that, but it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, make sure you don't mix them up. After you move the coil packs, you do need to pull the um, wiring harness that's right next to the valve cover. I believe that wiring harness is uh, to the fuel rail. So you have to disconnect the uh, fuel rail wiring harness, harness sorry, from uh, the valve cover with a pair of needle nose and then you can zip time out of the way to the rail. That's what I did at least. But you kind of need some clearance once you disconnect it from the valve cover. You do need to pull them back a little bit. So I found the easiest way was to uh, zip time. So right now I'm releasing them from the clip. Not too hard. Okay, you can see the zip tie right there that I've got. Um, I'm just popping it loose. I just have to tap it with a rubber mallet a little bit to get that valve cover to break loose. Seals are quite old and they're baked in there. And you just kind of need to jiggle it a bit to get it loose. It's kind of stubborn at first, but once you break it loose, it, it'll slide out pretty easily. Just have to get a good angle on it. Had to come around to the back. And there you go. That's the valve cover broken loose. These are my new valve covers, and I recommend that you highly recommend you get new valve covers because you can see the rubber o-rings inside the valve cover those are what go bad right there those go bad and um, you cannot replace those those have to you have to buy a brand new valve cover those are you'd have to cut them out and it's a big nightmare to try to replace those so I sprayed a little aerospace protectant on those new o-rings just to see if I could get a little more uh, life out of them. The last pair probably really needed to be changed at 100,000. I went to 120, but I wiped a little bit of aerospace protectant 303 into those O rings and let it soak in to uh, give it just a little more life, hopefully. We'll, we'll find out next time I change the valve covers, hopefully, not for 100,000 miles. I use a, a little um, gasket maker to stick on the underside of the uh, gasket there just so it would stay intact into the valve cover because you don't want to try to place that valve cover on and have the gasket fall off or misalign. So they recommend that you put a little bit of gasket maker on the underside, let it seal up, let it dry a little bit so it sticks to the valve cover and doesn't come loose. It'll make your life much easier when you gotta replace that uh, valve cover back on if that if that gasket's nice and tight in the seals. Uh, that's the type of brand I used right there. Here's the, their gaskets are a little bit different. So those are the Nissan parts. If you can go to O'Reilly's and get your aftermarket parts too, but make sure you put the right gasket on the right valve cover. There's a slight difference. And here is, the gasket maker that you have to put in the corner. Um, I didn't show the old gasket that I had to take off. Old gasket maker I had to take off, but I will show you that on the other side. But here's the new gasket maker right here in the corners. And um, you need to get, get those corners real well because that's the area that leaks just the front part of the valve cover towards, towards the front of the car. Not the rear, just this this part right here. Those are the two that you need to corners that you need to put gasket maker in. And so now that uh, I've got that all set up, I'm just adding a little bit more to make you extra sure before I put the valve cover back on. That I got plenty in the corners because last thing you want that to do is leak after you've spent all this time tearing the engine down. So it's ready to go and we're gonna go ahead and throw the valve cover on or place it on. 
nice and easy. Okay, as I put this down, it goes in relatively easy. Um, but you need to make sure that the spark plug tubes get seated correctly. So once I get it in there, you'll see it lines up. If I can get it past it, well, there we go. Oh, well, dipstick, there we go. And now I have to seat the spark plug tube gaskets and push and kind of push down on it to pop them in. So I got it down there, I thought, and then I have to push down to get a good seal. And I'll show you that in a second, right here. Boom, right there. It's gonna pop in any second, there it goes. You'll feel it give and it snaps in. And once it, when it snaps around those spark plug tubes, um, it's real tight and it won't move. Here's the sequence for the tightening of the valve cover. And you'll be using two rounds, 17 inch pounds for the first round, and in the second round, 74 inch pounds. So it's inch pounds, both 17 and 74. That should be perfect. And then we're gonna show you the passenger side valve cover coming out at this point. And that harness, as you can see, is hanging out. So I'm really gonna have to use my hand to pull it out of the way. There we go. And once you pull back on that, you can slide it out pretty easily. So once you get that, that out of the way, we are uh, ready for the next phase. As you can see right here, here is the factory sealant gasket maker in the corners. That's got to be scraped off. And you do not want that to fall into the engine, so be very careful. You can put a piece of paper there or a piece of cardboard to keep it from falling in there. I did get a little bit of debris, and I'll show you how to get rid of that in a minute. But... Um, it takes a little time. I had to use a bit of a putty muck knife. You don't want to um, scratch the metal because that could have, uh, cause a problem with the seal, sealing, uh, sealing the gasket. Right there, you can see the oil around the edges and that has to be cleaned up. I used a little bit of um, cleaner, like a uh, carb cleaner on a rag. Now I got a shot back out and I got just a little bit of debris from the gasket maker and when, when I was scraping it off I dropped a little in there so I used a shot back to get it out. That's one way to do it. I, you know, I wouldn't recommend blow, blowing air into it though because you're just going to blow the stuff down in there further. So if you got a shot back or a regular back you might get some oil up in there though so be prepared for that. And now that it's all cleaned up, I've got the new gasket maker around the edges. Make sure you get a nice dose on each side. And we're ready for the valve cover. And once again, I'm just gonna pull up really hard on the uh, harness to get it out of the way and it, it slides it. This side actually slides in a lot easier than the other, believe it or not. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pop, pop it down in there over the spark plug tubes. It'll snap in and once it snaps in it's tight and it will not move. It's very snug. So as you can see, um, having the gasket slightly glued in uh, is very helpful because it's not going to move while you're doing jumbling around here and popping it in place. It's, it's in there tight. And I got my screws out for the valve cover. Same routine, 
two passes, 17 inch pounds first pass, 74 inch pounds second pass. And I've actually got mine numbered, I don't know if you can see that. And the intake manifold uh, is your next project. And I had quite a bit of oil in there. The, the book says to use lacquer thinner. So I, I put a bunch of lacquer thinner in, in this let it soak and you can see it really freed up a bunch of um, oil and debris. It was really pretty ugly. Uh, it took me quite a few times to clean that out, but I did eventually get it pretty much spotless. But I used um, carb cleaner and I used lacquer thinner to get all the oil out. And you can see the frog body is just pasty with oil. So that took quite a bit of cleaning as well. And it just takes some patience, but uh, you can do it. Take your time on that, don't rush it. Okay, what we've done is uh, driver's side PCV hose delete with a little um, filter that I got from uh, AutoZone. I used a, a Lowe's fitting, a plumbing fitting to step it down, but that just keeps the oil from getting into the intake uh, part of the plenum. And this is the uh, passenger side delete, which actually sits on the PCV valve itself. And that one's just much easier because it just slips right down on top of it. What I'm gonna do is sh show you how to uh, fix a PCV valve um, so that it's free flowing. Right here, as you could barely see that, I just, I flash it really quick, but there is a valve in there with a spring and uh, it stays closed and it only opens with a vacuum. Well, you're getting rid of the vacuum hose that goes to the PCV valve. So you need to make that a free flowing uh, PCV valve. So it just vents straight to air. And what you can do is take a drill bit and very, very gingerly just slowly start to drill that valve out. And that valve uh, has uh, a piece, it's a plastic valve and it's also got a little metal spring so you make a couple passes through very slowly, not to damage the inside of the wall of the PCV valve because you want to keep that fitting. And you come out the other side and you can go back and forth through each end until you pretty much destroy that little piece of plastic in there, that little plastic valve. Then you're gonna have, you can take a pair of tweezers is what I used and pull out the little metal spring. So I'm gonna try to do is show you a picture of it of the uh, little needle needle valve, uh, you can barely see it. Right in. there, it is the needle valve. You can see it sitting in there, and you can you can make a few passes and pretty much take that out. Then uh, it'll be a free flowing unit at that point, and then you're ready to put that little air filter on top. And you in the background can see that I had to plug my K&N intake tube with a stopper because you do not want air coming through that hole. And I just went up to AutoZone and found a fitting. Looked around, it took me a while to find one, but I found one that was pretty snug. And then I used some PCV valve um, sealant all around it and taped it up and let it sit overnight. And it was a pretty good seal. So at this point, you're ready to go ahead and put on the intake manifold. Otherwise known as the plenum. And I did not show a gasket being put on uh, between the lower plenum and the intake manifold, but there is a gasket that fits down there and there's an arrow that points in which direction that the um, gasket goes. So be, pay special attention to that. This is now six bolts to put on the lower plenum and this is the sequence right here. You need a total of 114 inch pounds and I recommend three passes to achieve this. 38 inch pounds, 76 inch pounds, and then you're gonna round off with the 114 inch pounds. So just take your time with this. It shouldn't be a problem. Also see that I've already put the gasket for the plenum on as well. I secured that before I started the bolt down process. So this will be the third bolt using the inch pound torque wrench right there. Fourth bolt right there. And 
five right down here at the bottom and a six right there so once you get those uh, bolted down you are ready to finally put the top of the plenum back on and we're almost home free at this point <laughs> so there we go okay we are now ready to put the upper part of the plenum back on and as you can see I polished mine with a wire brush you don't have to do that of course I just thought I would uh, clean it up a little bit and that's why those holes are taped up right there but uh, uh, it's not too hard to take a drill bit a drill and uh, a wire brush and just clean that up so it should fit very snug and once you get it on there check for any movement right here I think I've got a, a wire underneath there so I move that and once that's removed it is very snug and we are now ready to bolt it back on okay we're gonna follow the same process we need a total of 114 inch pounds we're gonna do three passes I recommend 38 inch pounds uh, 76 inch pounds and then ending with the uh, 114 inch pounds so I believe there's 18 bolts um, and you just methodically count on through follow the diagram I gave you earlier you shouldn't be a problem at this point it should go smoothly okay I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I'm not a professional mechanic I'm a YouTube mechanic which means I think you should go through and look at everybody's video to get a good rounded idea of how to do this. I hope my video helps uh, fill in some spots that somebody else might have left out. But um, it's it's doable if you take your time. So last but not least, we have to put the strut bar back on, or the upper strut bar tower brace, and uh, they recommend 70, uh, 47 foot pounds of torque on this. Now I was not able to tighten it to 47 foot pounds because it just felt like it was too snug and I didn't want to shear off my bolt. So that's the last thing you really want to do at the end of a job is shear bolt. So I think I came close to 47 foot pounds, but definitely it felt too, too tight. Your uh, torque specs may vary. So I highly recommend you check the internet for your year and model. But um, I couldn't quite get the 47 foot pounds on mine. You can see I've also already finished assembling the uh, intake filter and put the engine cover back on, which I painted while that was off. And um, you're ready for a start right now. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps you out.